ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا This is another lesson that we're having reading from the book My Advice to the Female by Umm Abdullah Al-Wadi'iyya Hafizahullah Ta'ala And the last lesson that we had we read what was mentioned about sincerity and her advice to the female as it relates to the taqwa of Allah in private and in open and that the person should the female should diligently work to make her actions sincere for the face of Allah that she should not do any action out of pride or showing off and that the female should adhere to her religion for verily she will be asked in front of Allah azza wa jal and then we mentioned the she mentioned several verses from the Quran informing that Allah azza wa jal has created the the humans so that they can worship Allah azza wa jal alone and we mentioned those verses then we move on to the place where she mentions wa ka'anna khulqna lid dunya wa lil aqli wa sharbi wa lil lahu she says it is as if or people basically she's saying it is as if people treat people are of the belief or they treat life as if we have been created for the dunya and for eating and drinking and entertainment fa nahnu lam naqum bima yuriduhu allah minna for verily we have not fulfilled that which allah wants from us bal nahru nahru rawu fi biddihi and she mentions verily we the translation is like we we race in the opposite of the reason why we were created and she mentions about the dunya being for verily our lives are short and there's no doubt that this is the case based on this statement of Allah in surah al-ariyat wa ma khalaqtu al-jinn wal insa illa li'abudun verily we have not created the jinn or mankind except that they worship so and in surah al-mulk alladhi khalaqa al-mawta wal hayata liyabluwakum ayyukum ahsanu amala the one who has created life and death to test you to see who is the best in deeds so when she mentions that we have harwala we we race and we run in the opposite of the reason why Allah Taala created us this is haq because this is what many people are upon from amongst the kufar and unfortunately even from amongst the muslimun we find that their sa'i or their race is toward the dunya as Allah Taala says bal tu'thirun al-hayat ad-dunya wal akhiratu khairun wa abqa Indeed, you prefer the life of this world, and the next life is better and everlasting. So the reality is, this is what many people, especially amongst the kufar and even from amongst the Muslimun, individuals who are racing for toward this dunya, and they think that life is fulfilling their pleasures of eating and drinking and having relations, sexual relations. and entertainment and as Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala says wama al-hayat ad-dunya illa mata'ul ghurur verily this life is only a deceiving entertainment deceiving pleasure so 
it is upon the believer to reflect over this life. It is upon the believer to reflect over this life and to constantly remember why Allah Azza created us and what Allah Azza wants from us. As Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Ya ayuha nafs al mutmainna, ayyuha nafs al mutmainna, irji'e ila Rabbi ki radiyat al mardiya." Oh, you comfortable soul, the soul that has iman, the soul that believes in Allah, submits to the orders of Allah. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is addressing this soul, telling, "Return to your Lord. Allah is pleased with you." And you are pleased with your Lord. Oh, you pleased soul, or this comfortable soul. Return to your Lord. Allah is pleased with you, and you will be pleased. So, this is that which is upon the believer. Then she mentions some poetry, but in general, I won't uh, go over. Uh, oh, she mentions. أقصر مدة من أن يضيع في الحساب فاغتنموا ساعاته فمرورها مر السحاب أو السحاب she says verily the, the, the life is a short small limited period of time for a person to waste so take advantage of it take advantage of it it's hours for verily it passes like the passing of of the clouds. But dunya nafsuha qasiratun jiddan. She said, the dunya itself is very short. And she mentions the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, I'amalu aw i'alamu annam al hayat al dunya la'ibun wa lahmun wa zina wa tafakhurun baynakum wa takafurun fil amwali wa awlaad. She mentions the statement of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala in Surah Al Hadid. The fact that the life of this world is entertainment and pleasure. And beautification, and people being prideful amongst themselves, and then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentions like the crops, the people see it, it produces, you know, it uh, flourishes, and the people see it and they are amazed by it, and then the next thing you know, then the next thing you know, it it dries up, and it's nothing is left of it. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentions. The example of the dunya, like a crop, which flourishes, and then after some time, it dries up. That's the affair of, of the dunya. So it's indeed it's upon the believers to understand the reality of this dunya. As Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentions, what has deceived you with regard to your Lord? And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentions. فَلَا تَغُرَّنَّكُمُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَلَا يَغُرَّنَّكُمْ بِاللَّهِ الْغُرُورِ So do not be, be deceived by the life of this dunya and do not be deceived by the deceiver, yani the shaitan. All of this should be in the minds of the believers. And she also mentioned the statement of Allah, Surah Al-Kahf. وَضْرِبْ لَهُمْ مَثَلَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا كَمَا إِنْ أَنْزَلْنَاهُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ فَاخْتَلَطَ بِهِ نَبَاتُ الْأَرْضِ فَأَسْبَحَ هَشِيمًا تَدْرُوهُ الْرِيَاءِ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ مُقْتَدِرًا Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala mentions about Allah strikes a parable the life of this world is like the land which the rain falls upon and then you have the crops and then after that the wind comes and it blows away the crops وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ مُقْتَدِرًا and verily Allah is able to do all things and she mentions many other examples from the Quran in Surah Yunus, a similar verse, and that is like the life of this world. And even Imam Ibn Qayyim, Rahim Allah Ta'ala, mentioned in his Kitab al Fawaid, he says, the dunya is like an indecent woman, like a prostitute. She stays with no, no man. She stays with no man. When I wrote the that is the life of the dunya. No one can hold on to it, no one can grasp it. It is something that is going to pass. And the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, كُنْ فِي الدُّنْيَا كَأَنَّكَ غَرِيبٌ أَوْ عَابِرِ السَّبِيلِ The Prophet ﷺ say, stay in this life as a stranger or a passerby. And Ibn Umar, he used to say, إِذَا أَمْسَيْتَ فَلَا تَنْتَذِرِ السَّبَاحِ وَإِذَا أَصْبَحْتَ فَلَا تَنْتَذِرِ الْمَسَاحِ If you reach the night, then do not expect to reach the day. And if you reach, expect to reach the night 
and Umm Abdullah she says wa fi hadhihi al-ayat wa nadha'irha tahqir tahqir sha'n wa annaha daru zawal wa fana she said verily in these verses and that which is similar to these verses we have belittlement of the affair of the dunya and that it is an abode that will end it is an ending abode unlike the dar al-akhir unlike the hereafter the hereafter is an everlasting it is an everlasting abode and that is upon the believer to reflect over why would an individual why would an individual a uh, comp promise that which is everlasting for that which is limited and short why would you compromise the akhirah and that which would gain everlasting bliss for something which is short and limited in this life that is what is upon a believer to understand and then she goes on to mention uh, some other poetry we're going to skip to that poetry and then she says fa sa'adatu fi hadhihi ad-dunya la tutam li ahad yaqul Allah azza wa jalla so happiness in this life pure pure absolute happiness for this life in this life will not be accomplished as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says laqad khalaqna al-insana fi kabr verily we have created mankind in difficulty i fi shidda Allah has created that we go through difficulty and there's no doubt if you compare what we were in and what we were inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we work toward if we implement tawheed and work toward obedience to Allah azza wa jalla what we will once again be in but ibn khaim rahimahullah ta'ala made that example about the fact that mathalan we our parents adam and hawa they were in jannah and in jannah they had that which they desired they only desire something and it presents itself in front of them and it would be like that again as Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned uh, about the nafs ma tashtahi al anfus that which the nafs desires would once again take place so if in jannah you desire something and it is presented to you you wish for something and it comes to you whereas in this life if a person desires something he has to go out and work for it in jannah he has to go out and work for it uh, on this life he has to work for it he has to make money then once the money comes in he has to go to the bank and get the money out and then then he has to travel somewhere to to purchase that which he desires all of that is is not the case in jannah likewise in jannah when an individual has to pass you know uh you know has to defecate or the likes of that it comes out in the it comes out in musk so there is no urinating there is no defecation it comes out in musk in this life and for the individual has to use the bathroom they have to find a suitable place they have to you know this that that and it has a smell and and, and the likes they have to clean themselves and get no such thing it comes out in the smell of musk so we continue to eat and the likes and that which comes out of us comes out in the smell of of musk and comes out of our pores it's not like defecation or urination it comes out in the pores and yeah it comes out as musk it comes out of the pores of the individual as musk as, as it has been mentioned in authentic hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so there's no comparison so there's no comparison to uh, this life and and the next life so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us and we would have this difficulty and as she mentioned the hadith in sahih bukhari and sahih muslim on the authority of abi kitada that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam marra alayhi bi janazah faqal mustarih wa mustarah minhu someone who is comfortable and the people are relaxed from him they said ya rasulullah min al mustarih wa al mustarah min ya rasulullah who is who are the people that have relaxed from him the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the believe al abd al mu'min yastarih min nasib al dunya وَأَذَاهَا إِلَى رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ The believer, the believing servant is now relaxed from the trials and tribulations of the dunya and he has turned to the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Yani he has left this life, there's a janazah. Yani this took place that a janazah had passed in front of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he says someone is relaxing and people are relaxing from him. So the companion to Ya Rasulullah, who's the one that's relaxing, relaxing and who's the one that they're relaxed from him? 
The Prophet ﷺ said the servant, the believing servant, he now is in a state of relaxation from the trials and calamities and difficulties of this life. And now he's returning to the mercy of Allah. Well, Abdul Fajr yastariho minhu al ibad wal bilad wa shajru wa dawab. And the one who is a sinner, a transgressor, the servants, now, now that he's died, the servants are comfortable because they, they, they're happy that he's dead. And the country, the land itself, yes. Because when we commit sins upon the land, the land would testify against us on Yom al Qiyamah. The land would testify us, testify against us on Yom al Qiyamah, as it's mentioned in the Quran. لِأَنَّ رَبَّكَ أَوْحَى لَهَا As Allah Taala Ta mentioned, because verily the, the Lord of the land has given it the ability to speak. So the land, yes, the land informs of what, what took place upon it of sin. So when the individual who is a sinner and a disbeliever dies, the land is happy now because there's no more sin by this individual being performed on the land. So the person who is happy and relieved, the be believers are happy and relieved from the disbeliever when he dies. And the, the land itself, the ground, the earth itself is happy. And the trees and the animals, all of these things are happy when the sinner or the disbeliever dies. Now, then that hadith is in Sahih Bukhari. Likewise, from the dua of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, And I ask you the coolness, the coolness of life after death. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to seek or as you said, request from Allah Azawajal to have coolness, to have ease and comfort after death. Why? Because this life is a life of calamity and trials and tribulations. We know the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. حُفَّةِ الْجِنَّةِ بِالْمَكَارِهِ وَحُفَّةِ النَّارِ بِالشَّهْوَاتِ It's the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that Jinnah was surrounded with trials and calamities and uh, the hellfire was surrounded with desires. Naam. And then she um, mentioned the statement of uh, Imam Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah in Ghatat al lahfan which is a very important book informing of the plots of the shaitan. And it's one of the books, Walilah uh, al-Hamd, that uh, Sheikh Salah al-Fawzan Habib presently he's explaining this book. He started it a year ago. And we would probably be doing the book, even in Lahit Allah, we would probably be doing the book for at least another two or three years. He says, Lamakanish fi hadihidar la yubrad the ahad kain and man can. When this life in this world is not cool and comfortable for anyone, even the kufar, even the people with money, even the people with status, it's easy life for them. So when this life is not comfortable and easy uh, for anyone. No matter who they are, بل هو محشو بالغصب بالغصص والنكد وال ومخوف بالعالم الباطنة أو ومحوف أو محفوف بالعالم الباطنة والظاهرة سأل برد العيش بعد الموت. This life is surrounded uh, and it contains uh, many types of, of of hardships that which is hidden and that which is apparent. So because of this difficulty, the Prophet Sallallahu requested from Allah to have comfortable uh, coolness after, after his death, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That was the statement of Imam Ibn Qayyim, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, with regards to that hadith, with regards to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam seeking coolness uh, in after death. Coolness meaning relaxation and comfort and ease. Why? Because this life is a life which is filled, as Ibn Qayyim Rahim Allah mentioned, this life is a life which is filled with uh, calamities and tragedies and, and different types of, of harms, whether that is apparent or whether that is hidden. And she mentioned, after she mentioned some poetry, what dunya tu'atabar mazra'atan mazra'at al-akhirah. She said, and dunya is like the farmland of the hereafter. فَهُوَ فِي الدُّنْيَا in this life you are planting important statement she's saying in this life you are planting the good deeds and the bad deeds 
And in the next life, you will have the crops. So in this life, you're planting the seeds, whether the seeds of good deeds or the seeds of bad deeds. And the next life, you will have the crops. In khayran fa khayr wa in sharran fa shar. If you have planted good, you have good crops. And if you have planted evil, you will have evil crops. وَكَدْ كَانَ الصَّحَابَةُ رِضْوَانَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِمْ حِمُمُهُمْ عَالِيَا لَا يَسْأَلُونَ إِلَّا عَنِ الْجَنَّةِ وَلَا يُرِيدُونَ إِلَّا إِيَاهَا She said, barely, the desire and the focal point of the campaigns was very high, it was very noble. They would not ask except paradise and they did not not want anything other than it and they did not want anything other than it so this was the way of the companions and then she's going to go on to mention certain narrations that inform of that which the companions of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa were upon we will read those narrations next week inshallah ta'ala wa sallallahu wa sallam mubarak ala nabiyya muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam tasneem kathira